Welcome to Alliance's Request for Startups proposals. We, uh, specifically Chow, put a lot of work into making this list because we have data from probably like five to 10,000 applications that have come into the Alliance Accelerator program. And we tend to see some of the data points that could dictate where the future is going to go. And so based on that data, we've created a specialized list just for you so that as you're thinking about building your project within the ETH Global Hackathon, you're able to get inspired from the list that we're going to share with you. And for the winners that get um, the number one spot for our bounty, which is a $5,000 reward, you're also going to get a, an interview by Chow and myself. So Chow, let's talk about what excites us. Um, what's the yeah. first idea that you're most excited about? I mean, uh, at, at a high level, we want to see really weird things, really crypto native mm -hmm. things, yeah. uh, specifically on the uh, consumer application side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to see ideas that haven't been done before and that are uniquely enabled by crypto. It's okay if the idea is too early. There are many great ideas that have been proven to be too early before. But what really excites us is things that haven't been done before. Uh, so give you a very quick example. I think that in the ZK space, zero knowledge proofs are at a point where they're mature enough from a tooling point of view that they can actually enable new consumer applications and that consumer developers are able to build interesting things. A couple of years ago, zero knowledge proofs were a little bit too early for consumer developers. But today, we really want to see interesting applications. One example is pseudonymous social networks. Um, so the idea there is to use zero knowledge proofs to prove that you are part of a certain group or you have certain credentials without revealing those credentials. And you can participate in the uh, gossip, uh, in a gossip network, right? Uh, talking about things uh, as, as a, uh, a anon. So those are, that's an example of something we want to see at a high level. Another great example is, you know, on Tinder, uh, you put your education level, your net worth, and other key features about the user. And some people may not want to feel like they have to share that publicly. And you could think of, you know, net, you know, pseudonymous social networks where you can share these key properties of yourself without revealing the actual uh, data behind it. Uh, a related idea in the consumer application space is payment. Uh, we think that in the first probably four, 13, 14 years of crypto, payment was a little bit too early because there wasn't a critical mass of uh, users who hold crypto. Um, but today we're at a point where there is a critical mass. And so the idea here is to build applications for consumers or tooling for businesses that enable payment uh, using crypto rails. But the key point is we don't want to see projects that try to compete with Venmo or Revolut or Cash App, like those traditional incumbent Web2 uh, payment uh, applications. We want to see applications that serve a uniquely underserved user segment in the world, uh, a segment that is underserved by fiat payment rails. Um, so to give you an example, it could be, uh, you know, users or businesses in the cannabis industry, right? Uh, so stuff like that, like really weird things, uh, re things that are uh, either weird or, or sometimes potentially even outrageous, uh, controversial. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that we're excited about. Another area is the uh, creator economy and fan engagement area um, with the rise of uh, friend tech and song that X, Y, Z um, you're starting to see more or less some penetration in the types of consumer apps that can be built for this genre. And so some of the things that I'd love to see is um, more applications for the super fans where, uh, you know, artists and musicians can better monetize that 1% of super fans. A great example is, uh, you know, fans purchasing $10,000 uh, tickets for listening to Taylor Swift at a live concert. And so there is a, an opportunity to monetize that area. Another example is royalty from your, from derivative works. So an example of this is, you know, you could enable 
a whole class of remixes on music that could then be monetized if those remixes become successful, where part of that royalty then goes to the musician that came up with the original song. And the last thing is revenue sharing, uh, which is uh, you could think of, you know, DAOs as like labels that acquire music and the music then that gets distributed or licensed can earn a fee that can go to the DAO. And so these are some of the things that I'm excited about when it comes to creator economy and fan engagement. A broader theme uh, across uh, creator engagement uh, is uh, the idea of hyper financialization. So when I see consumer applications that are hyper financialized, uh, if you look at all the most interesting uh, crypto consumer applications that we've seen so far, uh, they're all about speculation. They're all highly speculative, um, be it tokenizing individuals, you know, or tokenizing PFPs, tokenizing mm -hmm. music of mm -hmm. you know famous musicians. These are the things that users really want and care about. You know, ultimately they care about making money. Um, for me personally, if you think about crypto, there's really two things that crypto are, are fundamentally interesting about, and they're really at the barbell. Like they're two at the two extremes of a barbell. One is uh, hardcore decentralization, anti-establishment. You know, destroying the, the central bank. You know, all that stuff. And at the, the other extreme of the barbell is speculation, is the shitcoins, is uh, you know sniping at uh, New Year's twenties, that kind of stuff. Um, so we, we, we're really interested at, at both extremes of the barbell. Obviously, on the hardcore decentralization part, there aren't that many founders, and it's obviously risky to build that kind of stuff. But on the other side of the barbell, there is a lot of founders building that, and there is not that much risk. Uh, we want to see more experimentation in that. Uh, hyper financialization slash speculation part of the barbell. Another area that I'm really excited about when it comes to hyper decentralization is proof of physical work. Um, we've started to see Helium uh, and others that have started to kind of build the core infrastructure of what a successful proof of physical work product can look like. And some of the areas that we think could be the future could be renewable energy. It can be, um, you know, like from power sources like wind and, and uh, solar. It could be batteries. Um, it could be uh, telecommunication. It could be many, many different areas that could ultimately take the, 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 the community of people that are all individual operators that can contribute to a much broader network that can enable a new product or offering that wouldn't be uh, available today. And that's all by using decentralization and then a the power of incentives as a way to align the community uh, around a product or an idea. So in the proof of physical workspace, um, it often requires uh, domain expertise in two seemingly very unrelated uh, domains. So crypto is one, and the other one is the domain specific. So it could be telecommunication, it could be climate, it could be science, right? These size and, and they're another really interesting example. Yep. Um, so we really encourage everyone who come from these uh, non-crypto related domains to experiment with proof of physical work um, because uh, the crypto stuff, we can help you with it. Um, and uh, so that's proof of physical work. But again, that touches on the hyper financialization um, part of crypto. So speaking of hyper financialization, obviously there's DeFi. Uh, Imran, what are you excited about in DeFi? What I'm excited about DeFi uh, is, uh, so what I'm excited about DeFi is um, two things. One, on the traditional DeFi side, there is startups like Ajna that is using request for quote system that enables no, uh, it enables two parties from the borrow and lend sign to be able to come in and fulfill an order from both sides without any protocol integration. So this enables like uh, seamless decentralization and then two, no uh, counterparty risk as an example. Number two is, um, I'm excited a lot about uh, NFT 
uh, and the perps or NFT five. And so that is there are perpetual markets that could be created around NFTs and the lending and AMM side as well. Uh, an example of this is uh, with blend, you're seeing the RFQ system being used as a way for two parties to be able to enter into a transaction. Um, and we think that this is great for tail end assets, but uh, there are opportunities to build something that's much more um, scalable in a way that can offer better rates. Uh, number two is uh, on the perp side, we've seen um, nftperps.com that it recently launched, but then shut down. Uh, and so I do think there's an opportunity for NFT perps uh, that's scalable and that could uh, solve the Oracle pricing issue in a way that could help uh, grow the perpetual markets for NFTs as well. Uh, a big part of DeFi I'm personally very excited about is privacy. Uh, yeah. We've been talking about privacy for 14 years, but unfortunately we still don't have truly private DeFi. And obviously as a DeFi user myself, I fully appreciate how important that is. Yeah. I wanna be able to send transactions to swap tokens in a way that my addresses, my amount and the name of the token is not revealed to the rest of the world. Uh, I don't know how it should be done. Maybe it's as, uh, as an L2, maybe it's as a privacy centric wallet, maybe it's something else. We don't know yet, but we'd love to see more experiments on the, on the privacy DeFi side of things. Great. And uh, I know you're really excited about the AI and uh, crypto crossover. So maybe if you wanna talk a bit about that. Yeah, so uh, one, of, one of the most obvious applications of crypto in AI is actually uh, content authentication, yeah. right? So in the world of AI, there's a uh, huge growth in terms of uh, deep fakes, uh, fake content. Um, one of the ways to solve this problem is, to, is for the creator of that content to sign a message on chain and separately uh, publish their uh, addresses on the uh, social media, for example, um, in a way that people can verify the signatures. Uh, so this is one of the most obvious uh, ways in which crypto can be helpful for, for AI. Um, another interesting uh, area to explore is uh, to use um, crypto incentives to bootstrap uh, physical networks of GPU. Uh, so right now we're we're in a massive shortage of GPUs uh, due to recent uh, uh, rise of LLMs and the subsequent uh, demand for the GPUs. So again, this goes back to the previous conversation around proof of physical work and hyper financialization. The idea is to use incentives to bootstrap such a compute uh, network. So AI, I mean, it's going to be really big in, in the coming years, and there there should be a ton of opportunities at the intersection uh, of the two. The, the next idea I'm most excited about is habit formation, uh, forming apps. Uh, we started to see this with Stepin, uh, where people were incentivized to walk. And as they, as, as, so they could either walk or run, and they would earn rewards in the form of tokens. And this created a positive feedback loop because those that, were, uh, that may not be able to walk or run without any real incentives will not do it. And with the power of the token, um, Many of the people that wouldn't have walked or ran are now doing that because habits take typically 18 to, let's say, 45 days to form. And uh, we've seen a percentage of, uh, of, of people that use a step in app that uh, turned out to be long-term users of the app. In fact, um, even over the course of the past two years of the launch of the step in app, there's still 200,000 monthly active users on the step in ecosystem. And that shows that the Stepan has a, a product market fit that no other app has from the bear market side. So related to uh, this health habit formation, we'd love to see more experiments uh, in DSI, so De decentralized science. Uh, the idea is that uh, one of the key challenges that science or the scientific community has faced so far is the lack of funding. Um, and obviously crypto is, uh, 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 one of the most effective tools at capital formation. So I, again, it goes back to the idea, the whole idea of hyper-financialization. The idea is to harness the DGEN energy of crypto users 
and help uh, with uh, capital formation for scientific projects. Obviously, these words sound very abstract, and that's because we don't know how it's going to look like exactly, but we'd love to see more experiments at the intersection of crypto and science. And this also touches on the, uh, the idea of proof of physical work. So uh, one possible example is um, use token incentives to incentivize users to bootstrap critical and large data sets for uh, scientific research. Uh, so think of, for example, a decentralized 23andMe, uh, basically where users uh, contribute their DNA data in exchange for um, uh, tokens. So to summarize, uh, there are two inter interesting things at the intersection of crypto and science. One is capital formation, and the second one is proof of physical work, and specifically in uh, bootstrapping new data sets for science research. Great. And maybe my final idea, and there's many more ideas uh, on our ideas page, but the final idea I'll go over is consumer applications. Uh, with the rise of Frontech, uh, which enabled this really weird application that enables you to purchase a key or share of someone that gave you direct access to this individual, um, is a key way to think about how to build in a social media space with crypto rails. You don't want to build something that looks and feels like an app that you use today, like Twitter or Facebook, but it should enable something new using, you know, the using crypto and, and financialization. Uh, and so we'd like to see more applications being built around the consumer use cases because uh, we believe that the infrastructure is ready for, you know, mass adoption, at least for the next hundred to million users in the in the next six to months six months a year my final idea is uh for those who are building uh on the infra side of things so we've talked a lot about applications but for those who are building infra there are three things we'd like to see mm -hmm. one is uh wallet infrastructure obviously this has been uh talked about a lot but we still haven't really experienced uh, uh, an awesome onboarding experience or sign transaction signature experience with mobile wallets or mobile applications. So we want to see more of that um, for, for wallets. So a wallet infrastructure that facilitates or makes the whole onboarding and signature experience a lot uh, smoother. So that's one thing. Second thing is uh, some kind of uh, cross rollout bridge. So we're obviously in a, in a wor world where there's going to be hundreds, if not thousands of uh, rollups on, on top of Ethereum. And we have to figure out what is the most capitally efficient way to bridge between the various rollups. Um, and perhaps the best bridge hasn't been born yet. So we want to see more experiments with cross rollup bridges specifically. And the third one is uh, specialized ZK compute networks. So you can think of, for example, ZK rollups as generic compute networks using zero knowledge proofs. But there are many applications that don't need a, a, a generic uh, compute because the, the kind of compute behind those applications are very unique to that applications. And as a result, the kind of zero knowledge proofs that are required to run uh, those applications are more specialized and therefore they could be potentially smaller than those generic uh, zero knowledge proofs. Uh, smaller and more efficient and cheaper. So uh, we'd love to see more specialized zero knowledge proof compute networks. An example for is, is a zero knowledge proof compute network for AI. So AI requires a specific type of compute, uh, many of which is actually just matrix multiplications. And so um, the proof for matrix multiplication is very different from the proof for a generic set of computes. So uh, that, 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 that is my final idea. Well, thanks for listening. And uh, if you want to reach out to us for more feedback, you could uh, visit us at the booth or find us on Discord, uh, but look forward to working with you all.